Sit back in your seats, get something to eat, and watch this movie. Don't let the kids see it, because, well, then, let, we'll let you hear the, the, the um, video first. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Left to the Projector. I am your host, Evan, back again with another film discussion from the left. Before we get into our conversation this week, I wanted to make a couple quick housekeeping announcements. The first, in addition to the already existing TikTok account, Left of the Projector Pod, and YouTube account, Left of the Projector Pod, you can also follow the show on Instagram at also Left of the Projector Pod. Uh, so whatever your platform of choice is, um, but yes, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, at Left of the Projector Pod. All right, we will get into the discussion this week, which is uh, discussing bugs, a bug's life. Uh, here to discuss it with me is Smirk Gently. How are you doing today? Thanks for joining me. Doing really good. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, of course. Uh, and I should have said, brought you back to the show. So uh, back again, you're willing to um, to discuss another <laughs> great classic movie of the 90s. And I think, I think all but two movies I've done so far have been from the 90s or 80s. I had one movie earlier, but I don't know. I like that. That era, it's good. It's a great time for movies. A lot of good stuff came out then. And, and, and like you and I have discussed, it's before, like, pre-9-11 movies. Wholly different, wholly different vibe. <laughs> it's true. It really is true. Like, the, the way that you, f- movies are framed much differently before then. Yeah. I feel like they had yeah. more freedom. Whereas after that, ironically, they had less freedom. I thought we were supposed yeah. to have more freedom after 9-11. We were off trying to find the freedom. It made its way over to, <laughs> I don't know, somewhere somewhere, somewhere in the east, in the middle, I heard. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they, I think they, they lost it, though. Um, but yeah, so this movie, for anyone who hasn't seen it, one of Pixar's early movies, you know, very simple plot for the most part. But, you know, you have a little island of ants, and they are living happily, as you as it seems, except they're doing lots and lots of labor for the mean grasshoppers who have forced them into basically getting all their food for them, even though they are perfectly capable of getting their own food. So I feel like the kind of the lead off to this movie is you're meant to see how hard the ants are working as like, you know, that they're working together as a team, but it kind of gives you a sense of like what the ants are like and what their society is like, don't you think? Yeah, it's um, it starts off with uh, with all of them picking food for the grasshoppers and piling it up, and and you see how they're they're very rigid in their ways, and everything they do is very regimented. Like, I think maybe like a minute in, the leaf falls, and they're <laughs> yes. all like, they don't know what to do. They and I know it's supposed out. to be kind of like a throwaway joke about the pheromones, but it's kind of funny because you do get a sense that like they're nervous people they're just very they're very anxious there's clearly something going on there i feel like because of their situation with like the artificial scarcity created by their whole the racket going on with the grasshoppers that's part of why they're so anxious all the time the smallest thing throws them off they don't they don't feel they can risk even losing a second right because of all that right and so the, the crazy the other the word that i wrote down that they mentioned is what they said is for the grasshoppers but they call it like the tribute which I found is like yeah. a weird word because in theory, they're just giving them their food as like basically for protection. Like that's kind of what it is. It's almost like a mafia thing, even though the I don't racket think, thing. Yeah. right. But I don't feel like that's, I don't like think of the mafia when I think of this movie, but I think of, you know, an exploitive class, the grasshoppers versus the exploited, the ants. And so that's kind of like the, really the entire point or plot of this movie as we'll get to like the class issue and like capitalist issue but then the other thing too is i think soon after this you meet flick who's like the protagonist of this movie you know the kind of uh go-getter aunt you know who wants to you know go against their their like strict rules and so he's often chastised for his little inventions yeah he wants he wants very badly to improve their quality of life and his inventions work like he's kind of you know he's he's kind of a goofball and he and he falls down a lot but <laughs> living in that rigid of a system I I would imagine a lot of us would make well yeah we make a lot of mistakes right but point being that he is smart he's he's capable and he's he invents like really impressive stuff but they can't risk impl- in implementing any of it because their lives are so 
controlled by this one thing, this like huge thing with the grasshoppers. They they have plenty of food, but most of it they don't get to keep. So they can't do anything to make their lives easier by like trying his stuff out. What are you doing? Oh, oh this! This is my new idea for harvesting grain. No more picking individual kernels. You can just cut down the entire stock. Flick, we don't have time for this. Exactly. We never have time to collect food for ourselves. It seems like they don't say, but it's it's probably at least half of all their food. Food, it presumably like half of the time they're spent collecting, and then the yeah. other half they have to then spend on their own selves. Whereas, in theory, if they just they spent the first time for themselves, think of how much free time these ants would have. They'd be able to, they'd be able to fix those inventions they have. There'd be some innovation. They make, they'd probably even get to make new stuff, even more stuff. Flick wouldn't be the only person trying to invent stuff. I think part of the reason he is is because he's such a goofball. They let him go off and do his thing more often. Right. So like, we don't want you to screw up our stuff. You screw up over there, which is also like why they send him away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe Flick has ADHD or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, <laughs> and so the, the, the other funny thing, um, so this is kind of the point where you also meet Hopper, who's like the head of the Grasshoppers, which is voiced by Kevin Spacey. You know, mm -hmm. irony alert here. Uh, mm -hmm. Kevin Spacey, not much to say about that. Um, <laughs> but he's he's like talking to them. He talks down to them in like every moment he can. I think his very first line or something, he says like, oh, I'm a compassionate insect. Like I'm, I'm on your side. It sounds like, yeah. you know, your boss at work, like I'm on your side. But then, mm -hmm. you know, someone could get hurt. You know, you, we need to, you have to remember your place in society. So right off the bat, he is distinguishing himself and the grasshoppers from yeah. If it was up there, would I be coming down here to your level looking for it? Hey, I'm a compassionate insect. There's still a few months till the rains come, so you can all just try again. Yeah. Yeah. He's, um, he's, I was talking to my partner about it and he used the word paternalistic. Um, and I was like, that's perfect. They, they project upon the ants this, uh, this, their role is to push dirt around and to get food for them. But it's because without them, they wouldn't really be able to do much of anything. You know, they're, they're not smart enough. They're not strong enough. Luckily they have the grasshoppers there. And that's why they're constantly saying weird crap like that to them in Kevin Spacey's scary voice now. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, I mean, he has to convince them that, they're worthless and essentially like that they're and their only worth is to help them and they make it seem like without them they won't survive and i think before we we, we started the recording for the episode i mean you maybe should share that little note about kind of their we were talking about you know how, how they don't they the, the grasshoppers are preying on the fact that they don't know what's outside of their you know island because it's literally exactly. meant to be like a little grass tuft Presumably it could be like 10 feet long, you know, because yeah. the ants are so small. And so they don't know what's off this island and the grasshoppers can fly away. And, you know, yeah. so they're tricking them. Exactly. And they're relying on their fear of the unknown and of other bugs, which would just be members of their own class. You know, the working class who don't really, they don't actually pose a threat to them. Um, Cause yeah, as I was, as we were talking about before we started recording, um, I looked up like what what eats ants as far as like other bugs, um, caterpillars, beetles, uh, black widows, like several of the bugs that they end up meeting up with later, who pose no threat to them and actually end up helping them. But that fear of bugs that don't look like them, bugs that they're unfamiliar with because they are so isolated, makes them easier to control. It makes them more susceptible to this whole protection racket thing. But, but what's even funny about that is when Flick leaves to go like bring a bring the like the champion fighters, which is all of the people that would presumably eat ants, which he doesn't ever think in his head. They come and like the other ants are super immediately like, oh, I can't believe you did it. Like, look at these champions. Like they don't even immediately consider the fact that they could hurt them. They're simply he, they already realize they're part of the same class. They've never met a, a spider. Like they're only. Yeah predator they've ever seen as a bird but they're not exactly. really going to eat an ant yeah um <laughs> this is this is part of why um when you when you were talking earlier about like again before we were, we're recording i think what role do they play are the grasshoppers the capitalists are they the bourgeoisie like what what is their thing and i think and this is gonna i don't know i don't know how a lot of this will go over it for me it seems more like the state 
um, creating creating an, an understanding among people that, well, you need us because if we're not here, those other people will in fact hurt you. We can protect you from everything you have to fear. You don't have to worry. But in reality, they're not actually protecting them from anything because the only threat they face now, realistically, are natural ones that they can't avoid in which the grasshoppers can't protect them from. The bird, like, right. can't do anything about the bird. Uh, the rain, which they already know what to do. They go underground during the rainy season. So what are the grasshoppers actually there for? And it's the same thing with, like, you know, I mean, what are the cops really protecting us from? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> you know, getting to another part of, like, the exploitation pieces. So when... I mean, we're kind of moving quickly through the plot, but I think there'll be more to discuss is when Flick, when Flick leaves, he goes to like the city, which I think is also kind of an interesting concept is the way they describe like they're like this country bumpkins living on this hill. And he goes to the city, which is like a couple like cartons and a can and a bottle and, and other things. And, like, and, like, a, the trailers <laughs> and, it, and like the things are moving really fast. He gets like stuck in like the, tra- you know, the, what's traffic. Cause like the, yeah. I don't know, other bugs that are moving really fast, but I think it's pretty funny. Um, but he finds the circus and the circus is all those insects. You just said the black widow, the caterpillar, the, uh, what are the two like twin bugs? Um, oh, the pill bugs. Pill bugs. Yeah. Um, and they're all being exploited in a different way in the circus. So it's also, I, I just thought of this, it's almost like you think of like the city where everyone is like liberal and great, but mm, no, they're just being exploited exactly. in a different yeah. way. Um, exactly. And then it's the flea flavor. is there. The flea is literally their boss. A flea. Yeah. yeah, a parasite, a blood-sucking parasite who doesn't pay them anything. And they all live together. They, uh, clearly, they're very passionate about their work, and that's great. But, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't even pay them. And he allows um, Francis, the ladybug, to be, well, for one, he's constantly misgendered, and that's very frustrating for him for multiple reasons. But also, he allows him to be sexually harassed at work. <laughs> yeah. by the audience members and nobody does anything for him yeah i think the i think the spider i forget the spider's name might come over to help at one point but they just they can't like annoy the customer yeah they the, can't do anything about it which in because this case is just flies no um, yeah yeah just a couple of flies yeah i think that <laughs> one of my favorite lines is i think one of the flies like i'm not going to waste like my one day on earth like my yeah. 24 <laughs> hours like at this Circus or whatever. Yes, yeah, crappy like, circus. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they are being exploited by the flea. But he convinces them. So, like, so I think the other, then the scene after that is like they're in like, you know, a bar and he convinces them. Like he, he, Flick thinks that they're like these crazy, ferocious, you know, performers, but he's like, doesn't see what's going on. He recruits them because what they think is a circus and he thinks they're like the classics, you know, scene in any TV show, like where each person's talking about a different thing and they think they're, you know, doing it, but um, I don't know. I, I also like wrote down like that the bar was like a working class bar in like the big city where like the bugs are still being exploited, even though they're like free, quote unquote free. As no one can see me air quoting. Yeah, they don't. They don't live in in whatever the structure of the of the colony is. I mean, clearly they have a queen, but they appear to have some kind of council that advises the queen, and the and the princess is going to take over soon. But yeah, these bugs in the city experience different levels of exploitation and enough of them are there like drinking that <laughs> probably these other bugs are dealing with some stuff too like it's it, it's probably widespread but uh oh shoot what was i gonna say damn um oh the uh the thing with okay so their boss pt flea <laughs> pt flea he, um, so he ends up firing them because the the show is not going over well with the crappy flies and the other people and the, and the other bugs in the audience. And, um, he, he introduces the flaming death thing. <laughs> yes. Right. And then the two, the two roly polies or the pill bugs who are immigrants who don't speak the language and are also not getting paid. <laughs> yeah. Like the, I, that's another thing <laughs> in the circus. Like what, what year is this? It's crazy. Um, but they knock over the thing and he gets lit on fire and then he fires all of them for like, I don't know. It's just why? Yeah. Because he, <laughs> because he gets hurt in the horrible, unsafe, insane stunt he wants them to do. 
with no sort of like safety precautions in place. He's like, I don't want to, like, I don't want a lawsuit here, guys. I don't want a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, like get out. Like he gets burnt, and then he's apparently fine. And he's like, you're all fired. How? You weren't even paying them. What does that mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it means you're evicted. Like really. But and then he, and then he goes around like looking for a new circus, which I think is always yeah. funny. Like he ends up in the same. But he ends up somehow getting there. I mean, presumably it could have been like a hundred yards away, you know, like you're, you're meant to think it's this, yeah. like to a bug, this is a long, like he traveled for months and miles and it's like, I'm yeah. there. It's um, a huge dis- distance. It's like the size of my desk. <laughs> what? I wrote this note, but I'm going to probably have to cut this. I don't know where this was. I wrote like, there's like a kid's mural of them killing grasshoppers, but where is that? Oh, that's later on. That's when they, that's when they bring them. When he brings them to the colony. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, now I remember. Yeah. They, they make the little the art the art piece to show what the what the like they're celebrating the pre murdering of all the grasshoppers. Right. Okay. Well, I can. Yeah. I'll, which yeah. Is, which is pretty dark. Okay. So there's that, which is pretty crazy because these these ants and Flick apparently are all thinking that these bugs are gonna just go kill like murder this whole army of grasshoppers that's been terrorizing them but even in the bar too like this is another part that i was like this is pretty dark and almost feels like there's a level to it that i don't know is is okay for a kids movie what starts the fight in the bar that makes flick think that they are like warriors is the two bugs that harass francis at the uh, at the circus come to like bash him in the bar yes they bring like the like the father or something or like the older like fly some big dude yeah, like I don't know. I, I in my head is he's like, his name is like Dominic or something, but he's just like some big scary, <laughs> big scary like fly that growls at that at him, and that's yeah, that's like the inciting thing for Flick finding them, and like this is a violent world. Like this, <laughs> there's, like, there's some like there are some violent bugs out there, but not where the ants are. Right, and I mean, I, I mean, I obviously. Like, I, I think being that they are bugs, like, as a kid, you're seeing it. Like, it's not, like, I feel like you yeah. can get away with violence in, like, a, a kid's movie when it's, like, a an animal or a bug or something. But, yeah, it's it's <laughs> showing also, like, the it's also meant to almost strikes me, too, as, like, the crime in the big city, you know, like, kind of thing. I mean, I don't know if that's actually what they were thinking when they did this. It was just kind of, like, their little plot Maybe. device, but. It did feel like, you know, like things were busy. The city was bustling. There's bars. People are, you know, I, I also like the mosquito who gets like the little drip of blood and then drinks it and like gets all puffed up. I yeah, thought he that was really funny. Um, what about the, um, the, the bug outside of the bar who has the sign and says, kid pulled off my wings and he's busking? Yes, yes. He's, he's like a, like a homeless person or, a, you know, disabled vet or, who, you know, whatever who's That's out there so begging sad. for money. That would be the bugs war. Yeah, it would be it would be people and children and adults and children just squishing them and pulling off their wings and stuff. That's a vet. We'll get we'll call that one a vet. He's a veteran. Um, I guess going back to the part where they then bring them back to the city and you were talking about how like they're you know, the ants are like, Oh, these champions are gonna come in, but it was almost like they were like bringing in like mercen a mercenary army. It's like kind of a weird I don't know how like you square that to the metaphor you know the general metaphor of you know the the worker the working class ants and like the capitalist or the state or the bourgeoisie at this point they're still thinking that they need someone else to save them they're not understanding their collective power right okay yeah 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 and like they are they are to an extent seeking out the help of other members of their class but they don't fully see them as the same class as them they don't recognize that level of camaraderie they've sort of hired them on you know it's not like they're joining together it's like they're working for them so at that point it's not really until much later that the whole like consciousness thing happens right they haven't reached i think in my like my little note page i put down like you know they hadn't reached class consciousness yet you know the the ants like they've starting to get it but they haven't gotten there yet and so then i think that you've i think they then flip back to the grasshoppers at like their little bar where they're like exploiting another class you know like the ones like giving him a massage or something like to to hopper and they're drinking i I also i can't think of the actor who plays the brother the voice of the grasshopper brother he's in a bunch of things i've actually run into him he looks like like the the way they drew him oh you've met him i've not like i haven't talked to him before he actually went to the same gym as me 
for a little oh, while. No. Um, and he would see him there. And he, he at this one, he was in the show Gotham. So I recognize him from being, he was in Gotham briefly, I think. Yeah. He wasn't the mayor. I don't know what he was in the show, but his his voice is like is just is great. It's a great voice for like the character. It fits really well. Um, yeah. But they go back there and like they're talking amongst each other about how like oh well you know we we don't really need to do this you know why do we we don't even like the food they're giving us and mm-hmm. how they're basically you know they're overproducing this food and it, like I kept thinking about this whole thing of I think you said either before or the very beginning like this false scarcity right. Yeah, it's a manufactured scarcity created by the demand placed on them by their oppressors who are forcing them to use the resources that should be distributed equitably to just keep them like way overstocked. Because honestly, yeah, they don't need it. They don't need any of it. Apparently, they don't even like it. Or at least Hopper doesn't. His yeah. brother said, yeah, his brother's like, you don't even like grain. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and they have that like the bottle or something where they're, you know, releasing one grain at a time, but like one of those hamster feeder things yeah <laughs> right right um and so the you know you have this the, i think this is where you know hopper then is like oh well now we're going to go back and you know do worse because we can like the, he doesn't have any other reason than they do it just for exploitation like they like they gain pleasure out of treating them this way which something yes, I feel like we don't always think about that in the terms of like capitalist classes. Do they actually mm-hmm. enjoy their exploitation or is it just inherently what they're doing? And so how can you not see it any other way? I don't know. I never thought so of that. I think what, what's a good tie in for this is that um, are you familiar with what the movie is based on? The fable of the um, grasshopper and the ant? I, the I don't know sovereign? the story that well. I know that it's based on this other story. That's all I know. It's, to, to, to sum it up super short, the grasshopper spends all his time when it's warm frittering, frittering away the hours and dancing and goofing around. Then he comes up to the ant when it's about to get cold and he says, please give me some of your food. I'm going to starve. And the ant's like, hey, screw you, buddy. I've been, you know, why don't you go dance for some food? Because I have mine and I don't need to give it to you. And then presumably the grasshopper dies. And there's like a couple different ways, like people have gone back and forth about this a lot. Like, is does this mean, can this only be interpreted as like, well, you know, work for your crap or like you get nothing? Or is the ant selfish for not helping? Um, but in this case, I think it's definitely the first one, which is that like, they don't want to have to work for their food. They want to know, even if it's more than they could ever possibly use, even if they don't really need it because they have plenty where they are, knowing that there are people or bugs underneath them that will provide what they need because they're afraid, because they have been subjugated to the point where they don't even think that they can rise up against them, even though they outnumber them 100 to 1, Right. then they're secure. They don't have to worry about anything they want for nothing and that's enough and i'm sure the power gives them a little thrill too yeah i mean and and the fact that they can then be gallivanting off in this you know this little I don't know, like a saloon yeah <laughs> saloon I, like someone pictures like a saloon in the old west that, or something yeah. where they're using their wealth again like there's no money being exchanged i think you're saying this before like there's never really like a money thing it's a moneyless society, hmm? um, bartering, see. you know. But I guess you don't really need it. But they're 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 off in this little bar, getting you know drunk or whatever they're doing, you know, and wasting away the time. Just like in, I mean, at the, the, I, I I see the the reason, but I think I agree that it's not. They could be both be getting food for that first time and have enough food for presumably the following year. They could just store it. And their next year would be nice and then they could all be dancing and enjoying their free time. Yeah. And it's funny too, because when they, in the beginning, they say they come, they eat, they leave this enormous amount of food. So literally they're showing up and eating all the food that's there. It's not like they're taking it with them and then they just leave again. So right. what is the point? Like, they have to eat more than once. Right. So what that part bugs me not to, I swear to God, I didn't mean to make fun, but like it, it annoys me. <laughs> it annoys me a little bit because yeah, what is the point? You eat one big meal once a year from these ants, and then I mean, is that is? I mean, I don't know like a grasshopper's actual like dietary means, but I did. I did in fact look this up. So they they're they're herbivores, and sometimes they will eat dead insects. They'll scavenge for extra protein, but they have to eat pretty regularly. You know, they right? I figured, yeah. And stuff. 
Yeah, but it makes sense. I wouldn't think they'd be eating grain. They just eat grass and yeah. stuff like that. So that it's almost it, that that even makes it even more crazy. Like they're getting food from the ants that they don't need, and they're just yeah. like stockpiling it just because they can. And there's they haven't reached the point where they're um, they understand what they're doing. And then I think this is sort of like the the final third of the movie. They go back. They they go back to the to the anthill to basically, you know, presumably kill that, you know, kill the queen. I don't know if they have that plan in mind ahead of time, but like they're angry because they think that the ants could, Oh, I think, no, sorry. We, we, we went a little bit ahead. I think that's when he realizes in his little speech that they outnumber them yeah, and that they, he, re, he comes to realization that maybe if we're, so if we continue to exploit them, they will, and we don't destroy them. We have to destroy them, or like make them pay. You know, right? Um, yeah, because one know. of them stood up to me, and that's unacceptable. It might inspire them to do the rest. And then even when he's having the conversation with his with his goofy brother, and he's like, "Why don't we just not go back?" And he's like, "Oh, yeah, that's you know, interesting, interesting idea. Let's do that." And very Kevin Spacey sort of <laughs> cadence. And then the other grasshopper is like, "Well." Yeah, why should we? We got plenty of food. And it was just one ant. Who cares? He's like, yeah, just one ant, you know? And then he buries him in the grain. You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. That's why we're going back. His logic there in, in getting them to be on his side with the whole thing, like, yes, we should go back and continue to bully these these bugs, is that, well, if we don't remind them that we can subjugate them, even though we don't need to, we won't be able to do that anymore. So we should keep hurting them because otherwise we won't be allowed to hurt them. Right. I think I, think I wrote so down the super line. Super circular. I think yeah. the line he says is, you can't let them because they all might. Uh, oh, wait, no. Uh, scratch that. Yeah. So I think the line is always like he says, uh, "There, there goes our way of life." Like if right. we, if, and then it says we have to. Keep, it's a matter of keeping them in line. Was I think the mm -hmm. like the the thing that I wrote down? Or it's, a, it's the line, but you know we have to make sure they continue this way because we can't let them think for themselves. Based, you know, yeah, that's what when they're the thinking. Stands up, they all stand up. Right, um, yeah. and then I think when I think the part where they start maybe in my mind where the ants are now realizing they have more power is so they, they, they can, or flick convinces them that because they can't actually fight these circus animals or circus insects, they're going to build like the giant bird, which is a yes. super awesome. Um, and I feel like there cool. they've come together and are realizing that they have more power like because they're not going to collect food in this time. They're going to spend oh. their time working together on one of these crazy flick inventions essentially um, yeah to build a bird just to build a big old bird <laughs> which is super cool and works until the the, the flea shows up and lights it on fire of course because yeah. this parasite can't can't keep his they don't have hands i don't know uh, he just screws it all up well because he shows up and he he exposes them so they get they get the bird going they're building the bird everybody's on board with the bird say that five times fast and they find out after already having signed on to this idea and getting excited about it, that the bugs are circus bugs and they're not warriors because the flea shows up. Right. So then they all leave. And as soon as they find out that the idea came from one of their own, that it came from Flick and not who they thought were warriors, they just suddenly... They can't trust this. him. They can't trust his... And I think this is the same moment where then the grasshoppers are, like, are coming while they're leaving and then they exactly. presumably come back and... Um, I think this is one of the, the, a weird line or funny line or no, not funny line, a evil Kevin Spacey line is that when they're <laughs> telling them, when they're talking about the plan, no, it isn't Kevin Spacey. I think it's like the little, um, dot over here is them, their plan yeah. to squish the queen. And one of them mm -hmm. says, I love our job. And their job is literally just to like instill fear into the grasshopper. So it's like they actually do gain pleasure. So I guess going back to my other question is they do enjoy like their subjugation of them. It, yeah, they're weird 
like, yeah, they just, they enjoy it. They like having the power. And again, Kevin Spacey, not surprising. That's very on brand. <laughs> right. Um... <laughs> One thing as a sidebar, what is the deal with the scary grasshopper that they have on the leash? Yeah, I wonder that too. Is like, is this like they don't feed him, and so he's all like whacked out? Or you like they feed him like dr- are they like giving are they like drugging this grasshopper? So he's yeah, like, is he like a berserker? Like, what is it? What is it? <laughs> they just like have him there, just just he's a he's actually he's a grasshopper just like them. It's weird. But right? they've like subjugated one of their own in some way as like their he's like their war he's like their warrior. He's like their military guy or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Their, their, their dog or something. I don't know. Yeah, that was weird. That, there were a couple other things too, like the, um, not to go off too much on a tangent, but PT's, uh, the circus thing that's like an animal cracker box, which I think is just so cute, pulled by millipedes or centipedes. Yeah. So what is, there's weird hierarchies in this bug world. That are confusing to yeah, me. Yeah, like, because those presumably are just, well, because none of them are being paid. I guess the way yeah. I saw it is that the the PT flea is, like, giving them shelter and food in some sense. Like, that's basically yeah. what he's giving them. I mean. It's slavery. They're slaves. <laughs> I mean. Slavery with extra steps, but not not really. <laughs> well, that, that would actually make sense. I mean, you say, or I think we were saying is, you know, why w- would the capitalists... Or do capitalists enjoy what they're doing? But if you look back to sort of the beginning of capitalism and, you know, uh, chattel slavery and the like, they didn't, they didn't, they, they enjoy doing this. Yeah. Whether they, they actually, like if they didn't enjoy it, they couldn't do it. Yeah. The power and the, and the influence and specifically the power over other people was the draw because why did why did capitalism become a thing because they wanted money to mean more than title or at least as much so that you didn't have to be born in, although we come full circle really but you didn't have to be a lord in order to have the same level of influence you know you could just have more money or more land that you didn't have to be bequeathed or or given by a, a i don't know did they use a queen or a king whatever it's it's the same, yeah. It's the same thing. They they needed so, they they wanted to be you you wanted to be the you, you they wanted to allow the the self made millionaire, you know, yeah. The quote, yeah, yeah. so quote unquote, and you know because let's there is no opportunity such thing. and get rid of this generational wealth that's that's stifling, you know the the real opportunity for yeah. The Which just created a new generation of wealth <laughs> till to we're all to we're all dead. Um, <laughs> Perhaps, perhaps, hopefully not. Um, but the, yeah, the, they, the, the, I guess we're talking about the, I guess that makes the grasshopper. I mean, so you, you kind of alluded to the grasshoppers being like the states. You don't, I, I, I lean more towards them being as like the capitalists, whereas well, they have like a class really within them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's how think... I'm, but then I also go back to like them being like, core of like, the bourgeoisie and then like is i don't know i went back and forth it can't be a one-to-one because there's no overarching like system in place right it's hard to play it's hard to put it's almost more like feudalism in a a way right because like the grasshoppers are kind of like these lore you know they're i guess they're not really there's no titles but somehow i don't know it's like some kind of intermediary how about this how about this i think you'll like this because my thing as i'm like as I'm talking to my partner earlier, I was like, although, okay, maybe they're not the capitalists specifically, maybe they're not the state, maybe they're not the bourgeoisie, maybe in fact, they are this universe's equivalent of like the imperialists and, and just like showing up in a place that is resource rich and which has, it's, it is self-governed and it is peaceful and the people don't necessarily have the same level of like military might but they are very capable and they're useful and the grasshoppers show up and, and they set up a nice little military base for themselves and they check in every now and again and they establish power and influence and they take what they want in exchange for that protection. You know, just, just in case somebody was to come and shake them down and do the exact same thing, (laughs) we'll be here 
to seek these. I think that's exactly it. I think that the looking at it as like expansion and imperialism, and I and my point is sort of like the city part portion is kind of like where they go back to where the 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 imperial imperialists whatever they are are living you know and like the city is just another extension of that so if you think of the united kingdom as an imperialist you know in real life they go off to africa and they exploit and so on and that's where they're getting their rubber or that i guess that's france whatever it is (laughs) and then they go back to england and like you, you like it's still shitty and it's still capitalist there and they're still exploited yeah. people it's just a different kind of exploitation i think is what we we're saying before is the city has one exploitation and then the country has another so i yeah. I, I i think i think that's it and actually yeah. oh go ahead oh no i was gonna I, I totally agree i think um we can even take it on like a global scale the city and wherever the grasshopper do you think it was the city that the grasshoppers went to when they were drinking in sombrero or it was that seemed somewhere? to me like it was like a different place sort of like like a res- like a resort place right like, right. like some tropic tropical place that's being exploited in a similar but slightly different way like they're, they're in the british uh the british virgin islands yes okay perfect so there's that in the global sense that we got the virgin islands over here we have europe in the west is the city and then where the ants are, the, that's the global south. That's that's just being plundered m- mercilessly and ceaselessly by the by the Western imperialists who are the grasshoppers. Well, this and this actually fits well. So one of the first thoughts I put down as a little note is that, you know, I think I mentioned maybe it was before recording how like this is one small and I wrote the word colony because that's kind of how you refer to the ants. But like you think right. of it as a colony in the sense of the colony in Africa where they're just like cutting up Africa. Right. And then you have, you know, I think the other note I wrote down that this, that part of what the grasshoppers wanted to prevent was the, the ants from reaching class consciousness and rebelling against them. Like imperialists didn't want, you know, a country to do such a thing or country, whatever quote unquote country, because it wasn't such one yet. And because Mm -hmm. if they did, their ideas would spread to another colony and then that colony would rise up and they would expel all of their mm-hmm. oppressors, the grasshopper imperialists. So I think that fits perfectly. And I didn't think of it that way, but I think I I had a thought of it. I had a, a, an, an inkling. You had to just yes. yeah. go for it. And so that was what they, they needed to do is once they finally reach class consciousness, they can defeat the grasshoppers. They literally rebel like you could see any of these decolonizing their their grass their hill and then they have mm-hmm. all of a sudden now they have these fancy gadgets at the end that they're using flicks inventions and they can presumably have more free time and they have like the little the baby ants that are doing their whole little blueberry scout i guess like they're the, so cute yeah the scout thing and and yeah and they can use flicks inventions because they don't have to worry that again the artificial scarcity created by the people hoarding it is going to make it so that if they if they screw up even a little bit then they'll be totally boned for like an entire season. They don't have to worry about feeding the right. grasshoppers. So they have they have the ability to innovate and make their lives a little bit easier and to even automate a little bit. Right, but even though they're automating and I think they I think after they show a bunch of the ants like using whatever that was like a the harvester uh, harvester yeah. is i feel like you then see flick and well, what's the queen the julia louis dreyfus character uh, ada ada right so they're yeah. like like they're able to like go off and like you know just do their just hang out because things are just kind of going they don't seem to have that rigid they've like lost their rigid um you know way of life because they don't have a fear like you said they don't have to worry about someone stealing their resources they don't have to worry about, you know, the, they still have their hierarchy within their colony, which I think is also an interesting thing because ants do have the hierarchy of the queen and the princess yeah. and so on. But it's weird because they do have that council. Yeah, it's, 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 it's at this point they've made connections outside of the colony. So they, they have allies, they have friends, they have expanded their world a little bit, you know, and, and the bugs for the circus as they're leaving, they're like, okay, see you next season. They're going to be coming back. So they're going to continue to like bring news from outside. Some of them might even leave occasionally and go to the city, you know, cause they don't have to, they don't have that same level of fear because that's what they were living with constantly when they were under the heel of the grasshoppers. Right. And yeah, they can, they can do weird stuff like the, um, the queen, <laughs> the queen can, yeah, 
I don't know, hang out with that other like old man aunt and like <laughs> they like sashay off together. <laughs> the wise man or, you know, the something. Um, and the other thing that I wrote too is that with, you know, they rid themselves of Hopper and they've quote unquote won. You know, they've successfully revolted and, and decolonized, whatever you want to call it. But they still have the, the kind of the un, the end that's beyond the end is there's still fe- the grasshoppers, different grasshoppers could come or a different bug. Black widows yeah. could come. So they mm-hmm. still have to protect in the way of like more of a, a real meta, real ideas. Like after a revolution of a country, you have to protect your society. So they're kind of living carefree when they probably need to get that council together and kind of, well, they, they I mean, maybe now they're going to keep lots of food where they can store it because that's what they need to do and yeah, when someone can, comes. They can build up stores just in case there's a blight or something. They can prepare for that. But now that they know that there are so many of them and that that sheer number of them united wields a very real power, it's kind of like they already had protection. They just didn't recognize that it existed. True, true. Because that's what yeah. happens at the end, at the almost end, when Flick is just, he's gotten the ever-loving help beaten out of him, and he's bruised and battered, and he's, and he's like, no, Hopper, I don't buy that, or whatever the hell he says. He's like, he's like, no, we're strong, because we're, we're all ants, and you need us. We don't need you, you need us. And that's when they hear that, is when they finally somehow, like, light bulb moment, and everybody's like, oh, shit, yeah, there's like a billion of us, okay. And then they stand up. And right. that's when and everything fight happens. Back, yeah. So if they still have that, like if they're still very much aware, if they have that class consciousness and they have that unification, then they might do okay. I mean, there are real threats to them. And this is the other thing. It's like, there are actual threats that exist to the ants. They have natural predators, sure. But in this universe, it seems like the other bugs are pretty much herbivores, except for the mosquitoes. Um, but there's the rain, which they adapt to. There's the bird, which they can't really do too much about. So, yeah, unless other grasshoppers show up, which they'd have to do the same exact thing with, they, they're they pretty much well set, But also, I think. presumably, too, if you were, not all the grasshoppers were killed, like, I think one of them ends up being coming in the circus, the, the, the like, the funny grasshopper brother ends up, like, being in the yeah. circus, right? Yeah. So it's like they realize, well, he, like, kind of realized his place. Like, I can just not be a jerk, and I can just hang out with these, you know, uh, the, the circus animals, but... You know, presumably the grasshoppers will then share this tale, you know, once they leave of them being defeated, like the, the whispers will go like the, the, the chirps will uh, cricket, whatever they do, chirp, yeah. you know, will their, their tales yeah. will be told. And so they won't go back and mess with the ants. So in some ways in defeating them, you know, they're in, in the again, the real world it's like you don't usually no one goes back after decolonization. I mean, yes, they were exploited in different ways. But not in yeah. like the slavery way. Yeah, not not when they've truly decolonized, when they've taken their fate and their selves and and their livelihoods into their own hands and seized the power that they always had but didn't know how to wield. Like when that happens, it's not you know, not super easy to pry that out of their hands again if they're still like alive. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. They, they've they've now they've proven. And I think they won't forget, too. It'll be like within the ant colony is obviously, you know, we know ants don't live that long. Presumably they're not living. You know, the queen's what, like, you know, de- a decade old, obviously, you know, the, the season to them could be like a it's week. Yeah. Right. But well, <laughs> I guess my thinking is like they're going to then share this information amongst their own, you know, colony where we can now yeah. defend ourselves unlike, you know, we before we knew how to do it. So. What's interesting too um, is that there's there's an ant like in real in in the real world now where they don't wear flower hats. Um, there's an ant colony that actually spans like technically it's the one colony that spans like multiple continents, um, and they all communicate with each other. So it's not just going to be this one colony necessarily that gains consciousness. Because right. I was thinking about this, I was like, what if there are other ant colonies? that the grasshoppers are doing this to because presumably they're just getting the one big meal from them. Right. Right. Maybe right. they're going to other places. But there's like in. different grasshopper groups that are like, you go, you can have this territory. You can have this territory. You can, like this, you know, another, like they split up <laughs> Africa. So. Yeah. But I don't know. I can't picture Hopper really answering anybody. <laughs> yeah. And not to get too nerdy with it, but the, the traveling circus could very much act as like their bards, you know, they're going to tell their tale. 
and maybe I, I was I was thinking about that because you have the grasshopper who <laughs> was defeated, <laughs> you know, in it. So now he's going to, yeah. yeah, they'll do a little act in their thing about the, you know, because they have the maybe they have the kids banner that they saved of all the grasshoppers yeah. being murdered. That I just like they'll they'll stick that up and you know, you put, the, put the fear up. into the flies. I guess the flies I don't have to worry about. Yeah, the weird uh, something weird I learned is that um, ants eat. So they eat like you know, whatever you've seen ants, you're familiar with their work, but they also, they drink, they drink aphid milk. Oh, that's weird. The queen has a pet aphid. Isn't that weird? It's kind of gross and weird. I don't know. Like I have cats. I would never, that's bizarre. Yeah. It's strange um, to me. There's some well, weird stuff. We've already that. gone past like the, the final scene, but one of the crazy lines, I think I'll, I'll, I might just cut this and put in the actual line. Um, but he says to them, like in his last scene, uh, Hopper to Flick, I think he says, "You." I think I, we already dis- dis- discussed this line is, you are less than dirt, you're an ant. Your ideas are very dangerous things, or mm-hmm. ideas are very dangerous things. You are mindless, soil-shoveling losers that are meant to serve us. And I was saying before, like this is a pretty... Even for a kids movie, I feel like it's a pretty like it comes off as like you know like the evil guy saying some evil thing, but it's pretty. I don't know. I don't want to say dark, but it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's a lot because it. it I mean, it's just it's kind of just the unspoken part of the attitudes that people have towards who they consider to be less than. I mean, people in power anyway. Because again, going back to what we were talking about earlier with like the instilled sense of inferiority. Right, right that they place on the ants in order to keep them subjugated. It's not just, they don't just say those things because they want the ants to think it. They actually believe right. that. That's why they feel entitled on some levels. Like the, like the, what it would be. I keep thinking, I keep, like, it's like such a, oh God, I'm having like such a Michael Scott moment. I want to say prima nocta, but I know it's not right, that. Right, right. Yeah, I know, I don't know that word. Rule. Well, but I was thinking and, also too, it's almost yeah. like in the movie, you, you obviously it's a movie, they need to say the things out loud. Like they're saying all the quiet parts out loud, which I mean, in other movies I've done on this podcast, yeah. Where like things are very on the nose, like the metaphors are out there. I mean, it's a movie. You have to. They're they're gonna say it. it's not. That's that. It's your art. Yeah, the it. director's art, and so he's. Yeah. It it's almost. I, I want to say this movie. It's surprised that it was made because it's still like a cute kids movie in the sense of that. But in some ways, you know, being I, I I'm curious. I didn't look this up because I wonder how much more could have been in like initial drafts of this that they had to tone down. And even with the toned down version that came out, it's not that toned down in the message i i think it's interesting too you know the whole thing where um this studio okay so pixar dreamworks the thing with steve jobs and how they split because or they they got there was controversy because right. this was yep. being made around the same time as ants right and that was upsetting for some reason whatever so they i think it's funny that people at least i've heard people pretty often like compare ants as like a, an example of like what communism would look like you know, because they're all working for the better of the, of the whole. Exactly. So in this in this movie, they frame that in a very positive light of how that can be exploited for others. Because it shows it not so much as like a system that they've bought into, but just their their general right. cooperative nature. Right. And then ants in ants, it's like the opposite kind of thing. Like that is bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No. No. It's I don't interesting. Talk about ants too much because we're just, but like. You know what I mean? Like, it's just funny how they went in opposite directions. Yeah, I suspect there's probably that. more to the story. And so it was interesting. So, I, so the movie came out in 1998. So the script for the movie for Bugs Life was written in 1995. <laughs> Apparently, I, I'm trying to like, I'm like scanning through some like Disney memorabilia website where you can buy a copy for $2,000 of the... Uh, of like one of the like original drafts of the script. The I don't know. Script. It doesn't really say about it how they did it, but apparently, um, you know, it was a collective. I think there was a couple. It was two writers, author. Uh, it was Andrew Stan and Robert Lentz were the two screenwriters. And maybe this is too in the weeds. Right. Uh, again, another bug metaphor for this. But it's sort of like saying how um, originally Stan <laughs> took the circus bug characters um, read the red ant and changed them into the character Flick. So I think one of the the ant was going to be different than the rest of them, which is interesting. That saying like you know, the the, the oh. protagonist Flick was this 
well, they, it was a different name, but, um, and then this, yeah, Red, it was named Red the Red, red Ant. ant. That's, what it, that's what it said, a Red Ant. And then it also says, the circus bugs no longer out to cheat the colony will be embroiled in a comic misunderstanding as to why Flick was recruiting them. Uh, so I guess that's what happens, too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it sounds like they mm-hmm. brought in some comedy writers working on polishing the script. So uh, t- the, those characters, the, the little pill bugs, is Tuck and Roll. That's and right. It says okay, it was, yeah. I knew it was something punny and cute. What might are they? No, are well, they, it, it, it doesn't have very much on it. But it says that those two bugs were inspired by a drawing this, that Stanton did of two bugs fighting when he was in the second grade. So like those two random little characters. But yeah, it sounds like <laughs> I feel like when you think of the when you think of the the circus, you think of like the what do you call it? The um the like mm-hmm. the freak show kind of people. You think of like a Russian or some other kind of yeah. foreigner. So that's how I perceived it in my head as like a Russian like they're Russian or something. Yeah. I don't know. That, that just in my head I thought that. Polish. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's, yeah, it's sort of like an Eastern European or, or West Asian. Yeah, that's just, yeah, something like that. Some of the that, little facts in here, I, I, I don't right. know if this is even true just because this is just some random memorabilia website, but it also says that the film was being envisioned as an epic in, tra- in the tradition of Lawrence of Arabia. That's pretty bold for a uh, Pixar wow, cartoon movie. That's... I mean, I'm not saying it's, a, good, a, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but uh, I'm sorry. You're... Yeah, holy crap. I, I like it a lot and when I was reading I, I read up a little bit on it because I was just like I remember watching it when it came out they even made like a Disney World attraction with it um, it's like one of those I don't know if you've ever been but it you sit and it's like a 3D movie experience so there's like a stage or like I can't really remember something plays and then also stuff happens around you that like, right. you feel happening um, but the movie, I guess, didn't, it wasn't like, it didn't go over that well. Um, it right, was on the exactly. heels of Toy Story, which explains the Randy Newman. Uh, but I think Pixar is just always like, yeah, Randy Newman, gotta have him. Um, but I guess it didn't, I don't know, it wasn't as well received as some of their other stuff. It was considered kind of a flop. Yeah, I think they also, like you said, the grasshopper and the ant. And so they were as innovation breeds or like capitalism breeds innovation. They were just taking like old bits from like the Disney vault or like, how can we spin this for 2000? And that's the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, that's how Disney made so much money to begin with. Just old fairy tales yep. that were in the public domain, which is ironic considering everything they've done to completely screw up yeah. copyright and, and patents everything since then. Um, yeah. That's how they, they, they just took existing stories and we're like, well, let's draw it, you know, see what happens. Snow White, um, which was a German fairy tale, Little Mermaid even. Like, they did that for years and years and years, and they're still doing it. I mean, trying to think of, like, a recent Disney movie. Now they're going into, like, other countries. <laughs> and, and they're, Well, they're, they're, not other countries, but they're other imperializing, uh, They're going inter- outside inter- of the they're, West. They're imperializing to, uh, to entertainment <laughs> from the global South. They are. Oh, my God, they are. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly um, right. But yeah. Oh. <laughs> Any final thoughts you had on on the movie? Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like we covered a good portion of it. I I liked how it wrapped up. I feel like the overall message is positive, as as far as it pertains to achieving class consciousness and recognizing your collective power together, rejecting you know subjugation by bad actors with overinflated senses of their own importance and and finding that in places you might not expect it when you know you take into consideration that if he hadn't found the circus bugs probably none of that would have happened if if flick hadn't wanted to improve things and make things better by inventing the stuff that ultimately yes kind of screwed them a little bit in the beginning then they would still be plugging away picking food for the grasshoppers and they'd still be in that situation <laughs> yeah um but yeah so um again smirk gently thank you for for uh joining me today to discuss this a bug's life yeah thank you well thank you everyone for listening to left of the projector and have a good one